To another study in the book of Hebrews on um, the fivefold ministry. We are concluding today on the fivefold ministry with the uh, gift of teacher. And we will be coming out of Hebrews or uh, Ephesians 4 and 11. Um, not sure why I have Hebrews on my mind, but anyhow, Ephesians 4 and 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. In um, as if you're following this through, you've heard that many times, but that's the reason why um, for the fivefold ministry till we come to the unity of faith and that and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect or a complete man. If we would look that up, um, it would uh, say com uh, in the Greek the word perfect could also be translated as a complete man unto the measure of the statue of fullness of Christ that we don't be as children tossed to and fro about by every wind of doctrine and that's actually one of the important things we need to note jumping ahead like normal and that of a teacher is James says um, that we shouldn't be many masters so uh, let me not get too far ahead of myself here let me jump to the definition of teachers and sure enough that's too high bring that down a little bit here and over so we can see the whole thing uh, the strong's number is 1320 um, <laughs> you can uh, did ask Kalos, butchered that, but anyhow, um, the Greek word for this, it is translated master 40 times, teacher 10 times, master 7 times, and doctor once. A teacher in the New Testament, one who teaches concerning the things of God and the duties of man, one who is fitted to teach or thinks himself so. The teachers of the Jewish religion of those who by their great power as teachers draw crowds around them, i.e. John the Baptist, Jesus, by preeminence used to Jesus by himself as one who showed men the way of salvation, one e of the apostles and of Paul, one half of those in the religious assemblies of the Christians overtook the, undertook the work of teaching with the special assistance of the Holy Spirit of false teachers among Christians. Ian, um, so, uh, well, let me, uh, I'm going to navigate the James here, I believe. Uh, James 3, it says, my brethren, be not many masters. That is the same word. <clears throat> that is, uh, 1320 in the Strong's. 
knowing, so in other words, be not many teachers, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation, for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and that is, I guess, where I was looking up the word perfect, that a complete man, and, and also able to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in horses' mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold, also the ships which though be so great are driven of fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small helm, whether serve the governor or list. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts us great things. Behold, behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Um, but we, it is important, and that can be uh, true of all the fivefold ministry callings, I believe. Um, that we need to be careful that we do not um, teach people wrong, preach wrong. Looking, studying into James, um, I got that idea that um, we can, you know, if we are, we need to be careful that, you know, when we teach or Wes, as teachers, if we teach something wrong, we can we can cause people to stumble, to offend. If you look up the word offend, it can mean stumble and to fall away. So if we teach things that are wrong and aren't and aren't teaching under the unction of the Holy Spirit, teach our own mind, teach um, what we think. Or if you get, you know, if you get deceived and you're teaching a false doctrine, you can cause people to stumble, to veer off course, to um, lose their way even. So there's a lot of responsibility if you're part of the fivefold ministry and to speak for God, period. It's a lot of responsibility. Really, as a Christian, <clears throat> we need to all have this ever uh, be cognizant of this that our lives really teach also and we could cause people to stumble um, going afield a little bit here but um, by where we go what we do what we say whatever um, that's what this you know people are all worked up about offending you know you offend me you offend them you, you know everybody's offended by everything what the offense that God doesn't want us to commit to other people is to cause them to fall away from him, to cause them to stumble in their Christian life. So um, just because my Mennonite family is offended at my mustache or is offended at my clothes or that I play musical instruments or that I speak in tongues that I'm a Pentecostal, that's not what he's talking about. They're going to be offended. It's, you know, you can't, you got to live for God. And you, that's not what, even, you know, stuff that doesn't matter. Yeah, you want to be nice to family, whatever. But that's not going to cause someone to uh, stumble and walk away from God. But um, drink, say like even drinking um, non-alcoholic non beer. You could cause your brother to stumble by that. You know, it's not it's not alcoholic. You're not getting drunk. If you if you drink one beer, you're that much drunk. And so, you know, if you want to get into discussion of alcohol there, but using non-alcoholic beer, someone that is weak in the faith could see you drinking that and thinking you are drinking and getting drunk, and they might have an issue with. Uh, I'm getting way afield uh, of alcohol. Let's finish this and get back on track here and cause them to go fall back into their old life of drinking, whatever. And so that's the kind of um, offense that we need to be worried about. And so when we're teaching, we don't have to worry about are they offended because I, you know, said something that they didn't agree with um, that, and that's the duty of a teacher is to teach people the right way. So you're going to offend people in that manner. But the offense is that we do not cause people to stumble and to veer from the truth of the gospel. So that's the offense we need to be worried about. And 
but I get the connotation that teachers are a little more in the Bible than what we put to them nowadays. Um, if we go like in the Gospels and stuff, I think, uh, was it Nicodemus was even, um, I think Jesus may have used the word teacher. Uh, he said, you're master of Israel. And I think that's the same word teacher. When Jesus said, be you not called master of others, that was actually a different word. It comes from the from the Hebrew. So it wasn't like a Greek word. So he used the Hebrew and it could have, I should have actually looked that up, what the Hebrew word is for teacher. It might have been the same. Um, but I failed to do that. And but they had a little more place of authority, like a teacher, like uh, Paul says, he suffers not a woman to teach or to usurp authority over the man. It's not, he doesn't want women to um, tell people about the gospel. It's the teachers back then were, I mean, we use the word master sometimes. So they were a, and I guess we still do in colleges and some, some of the higher learning stuff. Sometimes they may, or at least in the older English, use that. Um, but I get the feeling they had a little more, um, more as a tutor and even more than that, more uh, like a... Uh, trying to uh, <laughs> put in words what uh, the feeling I got out of this. And um, let me, um, maybe if I go back, oh, now I can't find, I should have wrote this down and I can't find it now. Um, he says that, um, Okay, basically that, um, maybe I have to come back to this thought later, I can find it, because there is another spot I want to go to, but you will hear a voice behind you telling you which way to go, and so that's kind of what a teacher doesn't just present truth, and um, maybe here it is in... Okay, yeah, it's let me, I don't, um, no, maybe you can't see that. But anyhow, in Isaiah thirty twenty, it says, And though the Lord give you bread of adversity and water of affliction, you shall not, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore, but then I shall see thy teachers. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way walk ye in it. When you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. So that is kind of a little bit what I'm seeing. It's kind of as a guide, I guess you could say. Um, not only does a teacher present the truth and teach about the, the doctrines. The doctrines are extremely important. They you know, teach you about what we have in Christ, um, how God wants you to live, you know, teach you what's in the word of God, how to apply it, whatever, but um, kind of give you guidance, kind of as a counselor and guidance and stuff. So I see in the Bible, there is a lot more to a teacher than what it is today. Today, you know, you go and you speak on a subject and then you go home and that's it. And there, a teacher was a lot more. Um, but really in the Holy Spirit is the, um, try to get back here so I don't lose that thought. Um, there's a, a thought I want to get to in Corinthians, um, that will really cover all, all the gifts. But, um, while we're on the teacher, the Holy Spirit is really the true teacher. He is that voice behind you telling you which way to go, turn right, turn left. So there's wisdom. There's guidance, not only just knowledge, not only just um, the exposition or the revelation of knowledge, but also wisdom and guidance in which way to go in certain circumstances. So we have to, as teachers, be un be the um, 
under the guidance and direction of the Holy Spirit, but really the Holy Spirit is the true teacher, and we can't come to that level of Him, but we must ever be under His guidance and tutelage as a teacher, I guess. Uh, he's the master teacher. We're under teachers. That's what we all are. We're all you know, you're under shepherds, you're everybody's under under Christ, under God, under the, you know, leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. And we aren't some special great people, you know, that we shouldn't be going around trying to proclaim ourselves as some master or something like that. And everybody else is subservient to us. That's not how Christ wants us to operate in his kingdom. He is the master and we've got one father, God, the father. And so while we want to look, um, admire, appreciate, and love those that are in the fivefold ministry for the work they do, it's very important. It's called of God. And it is, um, if God, if they're actually speaking what God is saying and stuff, then it is as of from God. And we better listen, but we have to make sure it's from God. Um, and so uh, a teaching is a lot more than just, um, that's why a pastor really needs to be also a teacher. So a pastor is really a teacher too. Is, um, But then there are just teach the gift of teaching separate from pastors also. Um, but let me go to, uh, let me drag this over so we can see it in... Um, Second Corinthians chapter 13. While studying this, as you can see my highlighted things up there on teacher, I came across this and I felt like the Spirit wanted me to bring this out. Though I speak with the tongue of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to burn and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. So we can have all these gifts and stuff, and yet if we don't love the God kind of love, the people. And the only way you can do that is by understanding the cross and um, his love for us. And when you see the cross, what Christ did for us at the cross, and you understand that everything through that, then, and that's one of the gifts, or that's part of the fruit of the Spirit is to love. And so when you're walking properly with your faith anchored in Christ and what he did for us at the cross, then the Holy Spirit can move in you and his uh, fruit be developed in you and love is one of them and so if you're you know if you're an apostle and you don't have love it doesn't do you any good it doesn't profit if you're a pastor or if you're a prophet or a teacher or whatever and you do not have love and then um that was yeah i was mixing up my scriptures in my mind <laughs> and um it it profits me nothing, he says. And so we have to have love. We, we have to be, of course, Christians first. No matter what you're called to be, we're all Christians first. So we're all, um, and there is no, no hierarchy in the kingdom of God. These are gifts given to edify the church, and you're the servant of those that you are ministering to. You're not the Lord of those that you're ministering to. So even though, you know, there seems to be more of a connotation of um, more to teaching than just breaking down the word of God or whatever. Um, there, uh, there's, you've got to have love. Um, I'm going to see if I can <laughs> talk and find... Maybe I can't. Maybe I need to uh, forget it. But I was in Corinthians. Uh, see if I can find it. Um, once again, speaking of the gifts. Um, 
looking, 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 um, and I'm not finding it. But he was speaking that God has set, and maybe it's not um, in Corinthians. God has set in the church first apostles, then prophets, then teachers. It skips the others. And so we see teachers are extremely important in the church. Then it's working of miracles, healings, governments, uh, helps. And so there's more to the church structure than these fivefold ministry callings. And like I would, I didn't study it out, but um, we, now I forgot, I was <laughs> still looking for my passage of scripture. It's there and somewhere. Um, there it is, right before my eyes. Um, actually in uh, Corinthians, right, where I was going to be at. Um, it says, Now you are the body of Christ and members in particular, and God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. After that, miracles and gifts of healings, helps, government, diversities of tongues, and uh, there we can maybe see some of it. Um, do all have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show unto you a more excellent way. In um, so not everybody's one. As we said before, you, the best gift or the one you should seek for is the one that God wants you to do and I've got my heater getting out of control here again this is a tiny room and so uh, our lovely electronics nowadays uh, don't want to operate properly like the way they should so um so not you're not called to the same thing as your brother or your sister but you need to be concerned with God, what God has called you to be and be faithful in that. And then that's the greatest thing for you is what God's called you to do. Not to be something you're not. You need to forget about that. God gives you the grace for where he's called you to. And that's the that's the greatest gift and the greatest thing. Um and I went and screwed my program up here now, so I'm uh, <laughs> I'm not sure how to get back from it, but uh, there I went. But uh, so we we see that teachers are much more than just, um, and they're very important in the church. They're extremely important in the church, and there's some people that I was involved with um, that not understanding. The importance of doctrine said that doctrine is not important. Doctrine is extremely important. And it's extremely important that teachers teach it right. Their whole thing is that all the church fights are over doctrines. But doctrine, really the teaching that it's out of the Bible, it's the word of God, it's God's word. So it's extremely important and it guides you in your life. The teaching of doctrine does. So... But what do we say in Corinthians 13, what did the Holy Spirit say through Paul? That if you don't have love, see that's that's the part they're missing. If you don't have love, it's going to do you nothing. You might have all your doctrines straight, but if you don't have love, if you don't understand what Christ did for you on the cross and understand that you stand by faith, by grace, and so does your brother or sister who doesn't have the doctrine totally right, who doesn't teach it all right, and it's you're gonna have church fights you're going and that that's why the cross it cuts through false doctrine when you see the cross what jesus did at the cross it cuts through the false doctrine it cuts through church fights if you now there's people that misunderstand the cross and try to use the cross to beat other people up and that's not living by the cross that's same old same old living by the flesh living under law you're just using verbiage 
you cannot make a law out of the cross of what Jesus did at the cross. It, it's like oil and water it does not mix. You might use verbiage to um, make it seem like you're teaching the cross or preaching the cross, but you are not. If you are thinking you're better than your brother or your sister, you are not understanding the grace of Christ and you're standing before God is through faith and through grace, not through through grace, I should say. It's I mean you've got to have faith, but it's not because you've got so much greater just a little bit of faith. Just the faith is a seed of mustard and it's really the grace of God because of what Jesus did at the cross that you can stand. And then you can see the love. You can see that you weren't always as good as you think you are. And if you really once you start really understanding the gospel and knowing it, the more you don't know. That's how it is in life, period. Whether it be construction or whatever, the more you know about a subject, the more you know, realize you don't know. So when you know just a little bit, that's when you think you know everything and <laughs> you know nothing. So just keep your mouth shut and don't um, proclaim your ignorance to the world. Um. But this, so teachers are extremely important in the kingdom of God and third and listed as thirdly under apostles, prophet, and teachers. So they're extremely important in the general body of Christ and in the church, your local church and whatever, um, to properly teach the word of God and its truth in the doctrines of the Bible and it will set you free and you will know how to walk. You will know which way to turn and the Holy Spirit's really the true teacher and we need to teach under his unction and his guidance and his leading and speak what he wants us to say and live the way Jesus lived, not doing mine own will, but whatever I hear the father say that I do or what I see him do. Um, very important teaching because we receive the greater condemnation. Those of us that teach and preach the word of God, you know, if we cause people to stumble by te by teaching something wrong, um, we're in a lot worse trouble than um, a Christian that's not out there teaching it. You know that, but um, we all are to be preachers of the gospel. But those of us that are called to preach and teach the gospel or whatever, we have a very high responsibility to get it right. Uh, be as the Lord wants it to and to have that love. And so I'm probably not, I don't know, I may be gone next Sunday. So um, not many people watch the live thing. They normally watch it later. Um, that's why I gave up on my two o'clock thing I basically get to it whenever I get to, <laughs> to it instead of waiting around till a specific time um, so we will continue on the next session um, in verse 17 in the study of the book of Ephesians and this I think I see I learned a lot through it I hope uh, those that listen to this learn some but that was, I think, a good thing to break down this fivefold ministry. I learned a lot. Hopefully, y'all learned a little bit because I didn't go in it very deep. But just um, so far, I haven't went very deep in my teachings because um, there's so much study. You really need to put 40 hours of study into one study if you want to really do it justice. And I haven't got the time to do that. Um, I've got to do, do that in physical labor to try to make ends meet for the family. So those will, those that do that full time, we'll let them teach that. So if you want deeper studies, you know, look for uh, Lauren Larson and some of those that are, um, which he basically, I'm not sure if it's anything's available for him other than through the Bible college. Um, but so, um, Fivefold ministry gifts are extremely important in the church, but it's not a, um, you're not a Lord, you're a servant. And so let's all serve one another in where God has called us to, and let's not be heady and high-minded, but let's love one another. And 
We'll see you next time. Thank you.